there's tens of thousands of studies and now hundreds of uses by mainline medical systems for uh, the uh, HTC, uh, the, the uh, chemicals that are in marijuana. But then you don't take Prozac, but you like to smoke a little bit of marijuana. And you're a criminal. And you're a criminal. It's ridiculous. It's because they can't control it. It's because it's a plant. It's that simple. It's like you can't control people growing a plant. So you have to make that plant illegal. You can't patent it. You can't, you know, pharmaceutical companies, if it's going to kill, you know, a hundred of their different products, if marijuana is a healthier, more natural substitute for a hundred of their products, they fight against it. You know, it, what's really fascinating is that Schedule One drugs in this country, the ones that are the most illegal, oftentimes are the safest. Marijuana, Schedule One drug. Never killed Mushrooms. anyone, but Prozac. Exactly. They admit over 300,000 deaths a year from prescription drugs. Well, even crystal meth. Crystal meth, heroin, those are Schedule Two. You know, cocaine is Schedule Two. Marijuana is more illegal and, you know, and supposedly more dangerous than all of them. Meanwhile, it's never killed anyone. But I always use this statistic. 150 people die every year because coconuts fall on their head. 150. Zero from pot. Well, a statistic we use whenever they're trying to ban guns using school shootings, and this has been the same every year for decades, there are more football deaths than school shooting deaths every single year. Here's a statistic I always use when people uh, talk about mixed martial arts, how dangerous it is. More people have died from girls cheerleading since 1984 then have died doing martial arts it's those big pyramids they do they're like 20 feet in the air and fall there throw them yeah four people have died four girls have died since 1980 i think 82 or 84 it's something like 30 something a year die in high school football yeah yeah high school football's rough man oh man i'm listen i mean i'm not a lot a of kids get if they don't die they get debilitated you listen know? i got on the uh first string and and uh, i was a little guy and then they when i was a freshman sent me to varsity in a 4A school, and I, and I and after that season, I said, I'm getting out of this. Yeah, there's you know, a I mean, lot I, of guys who die, um, you know, and they're, they're like, there was that one guy that committed suicide, a pro football player, really recently, he was in his 40s, and they said they had a brain of an 80-year-old man with Parkinson's. Oh, listen, and a few times, I'd have somebody concussion. run through, and some giant black guy run over me, and I'd be seeing oh, stars. Oh, to be a black guy. Well, yeah, of course it was, was a big black guy. White, no giant white well, guys. I had, giant, I had giant white guys run over me. <laughs> the black guys are scarier. Well, no, it just <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, no, that's who tended to run over me. Yeah, the white the white guys kind of let you alone. No, they ran over me too. They just. But I think the few times I got my bell power. really, I think the few times I really got my my uh, bell rung, it was a black guy. Well, there yeah. you go, the black athlete. Yep, they're taking over. What's happening in ultimate fighting with the athletes? Uh, well, the UFC is, uh, right now, it's a really exciting time. There's a lot of great fights going on. You know, there's a, a lot of great champions. Next weekend is huge. It's BJ Penn versus George St. Pierre. BJ Penn is the 155 pound champion, and George St. Pierre is the 170 pound champion. And both of them are pound for pound in the top, you know, three or four guys in the world. You know, they're, they're the elite. So they're little and they're super powerful. Yeah. Well, George St. Pierre is really about. 185, 190, and he diets down to 170, whereas BJ really walks around at like 165, and he bulked up to go to 170. You know, so they're meeting in the middle. They're meeting at 170, and I think it's, it's just an awesome fight. Just two guys that are just born to do this, you know. It's going to be incredible. So you're pretty, Alex Jones. You're pretty excited about that. You want to go? You want to go? Well, go to the old. Want to go to the UFC? <laughs> Does the wife let you escape to Vegas for the weekend? Uh, my wife lets me do whatever I want. Look at but... you, you animal. Okay, I'll go to Vegas right. for the fight. If you want to go, I hook it up. Hook it up. I'll hook it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Jason Burmis would kill for that. You know, yeah. The, the fellow you talk to who fills in sometimes. Last time you were on the air, he was in studio with us. He's the guy from uh, Loose Change. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what does he? What did he do with Loose Change? Was he? Uh, he did a lot of it. Uh, I mean, he worked on you know uh, both the films. Uh, now I know that like Popular Science had like a whole uh, magazine article dedicated. Yeah, to that's Hearst Publishing. Hearst Publishing. Yeah, is Remember? that what that is? I mean, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, next to the word "yellow journalism" is Hearst Publishing, and they also own A and E, and they run these sit these dramas where where pot smokers are nine eleven truthers and they're killing people and are terrorists. I, I can play the clip, the, the, the latest one. So it's pure propaganda, and they lie. They say, in the Popular Mechanics book, they say not, NORAD only intercepted one plane in all of its history. Before 9-11, that was Payne Stewart. And then we go and get the NORAD records and the NORAD spokesman after Payne Stewart bragging, in this year we've already intercepted 167 aircraft. Everybody knows, pilots know that if your plane gets off course around a storm, you know they send up F-16s. So, wow. so, so that's one lie. 
Uh, they also said that Building 7 uh, fell because the fuel tank blew up. NIST admits that isn't the case. Now, the Building 7 thing, you know, if you if you look at the way it fell, I mean, it looks like a controlled demolition, like more so even than Building 1 and Building 2. Is it possible that it was just a flaw in the construction, that a gigantic raging fire inside the building caused it to collapse like that? Is it even possible? No, no, they've now... They've given five different reasons it fell, and now the six. They said the last five, they were wrong. Right. The, the, the new one is thermal expansion. It's never happened anywhere in a building before, uh, And but that's not even the issue. We have all these firefighter and police videos now where they're saying, get back, they're going to blow it up, get back, and then BBC. So do you think that they set it up like when they were building it like this? I believe they meant to fly the Pennsylvania plane into it, and something happened. And I had Pentagon people tell me that the Pentagon refused orders and did shoot the plane down, and that, and that they meant later in that morning to have Flight 93 fly into it, so it was already wired, and that was the CIA headquarters. Huh. So they still had to blow it up. So, but uh, th this is what I don't understand. Do you believe that it was rigged like just just prior to the attacks, or do you think that it was constructed with all this explosives in it? Like, how do you think that? Well, they... we found out. We found out. I mean, if, if you want me to go through it, I, I could have you back for an hour sometime and have the physicist and scientist on. It turns out that uh, they did uh, special construction. And that NASA and then the very guys on NIST who are doing the cover up are the experts on a on a putty thermate thermite that they use to to to, to discouple rockets in their stages. Right. And then it, it's explosive. It cuts through things instantly. But they had to get through to no, the no, frame no. of the building. They to jacketed all the stuff. Right. In 1999, they did a remodel and added new fireproofing and used a special company connected to the group. So they set this up from 1999 and they waited until. Stay there. Stay there. Here we go. saying only in Austin, Texas, would you have Alex Jones, the police chief? Yeah, well, the police chief was saying that. He was doing impressions of you. It was hilarious. He's going, one day closer to victory. I've got the documents. The police chief's out there. Yeah, he noticed he brought bodyguards, though. He's a little nervous of you. Nervous yeah. of you? What? He knows you're no, the ultimate no, fighting please. commander. I'm just a talker. I just talk. You know, Joe, I know people that know you, and you actually go to the gym. You, 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 I mean, you get into big stuff with big guys. You actually train with the police, actually. You said a lot of cops. Yeah, I, I mean, you're pretty. Cops, and, and, and haven't you won some uh, some awards? When I was younger, yeah, I fought a lot. Won a lot of taekwondo tournaments and some kickboxing fights. But yeah, I haven't done that in a long time. Though. I haven't competed in, you know, several decades. And I had Chuck Norris on, and I said, "Who would win between you and Bruce Lee?" And he basically said, "Bruce Lee was just an actor. I'm a champion. What do you think would happen?" Yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah, if I had a bet on, I had a bet on Chuck back in the day. Chuck was a badass. I was a huge Chuck Norris fan. When Chuck was thirty years old, how would he have done an open fight? He'd have got his butt whipped because of the grappling. Well, he well, he would have learned it, you yeah. know, for sure, yeah. uh, guaranteed. If there was mixed martial arts around when Chuck Norris was around when he was competing, definitely he would have learned it. And you know, a, a guy was a champion in anything. Whether you're a champion in boxing, whether you're a champion in wrestling. Most of it is your mental. ability, your, your your mental focus, and your ability to figure out what it what you need to do to get great at something. You know, and you can do that if you're if you're good at boxing, you can be good at jujitsu. It's the same thing. You just have to you know apply that same focus. I mean, there are certainly sports where someone has physical advantages. You know, like hey guys, rotate the camera around so we can see the police chief in there. <laughs> uh, rotate. Uh, well, let's get some of the guys out of the studio first so we have room. Uh, let's uh, rotate the the, uh, the uh, camera around so we can see the police chief in there. Uh, no, this is the camera to rotate. If you rotate camera two... Alex, Alex is worried you're going to put him in a FEMA camp. If you put him in a FEMA camp, could it please be air-conditioned? Here, rotate it around. Oh, I asked him. And listen, I asked him last time. I said the feds said... W w with, look, I've got a woman okay. going to a FEMA camp charged under the Patriot Act, L.A. Times, I've said this for to you spilling before. a Bloody Mary on a plane. I've said this to you before, and I'm going to say it again. Maybe that chick was a douchebag. She deserves to go Isn't to the FEMA possible? camp. Isn't that possible? 
Isn't just, it possible? Isn't that possible that chick was a giant pain in the ass, and she was a pain in the ass to the uh, flight attendants, and then she was a pain in the ass to the cops that talked to her when she got off? Maybe she screams and yells. Maybe she likes to curse at people. Maybe she can't control her temper. Maybe she should be locked up. Maybe she's just a pain should, in the ass. Should she be ch charged outside the Bill of Rights under the Patriot Act? Maybe. Maybe her. Look at you Maybe groveling. Just that one lady. Look at you groveling to the police. It's true. I'm licking their boots. You, you turn me Jones. over to them. Listen, <laughs> it's it's like I'm, uh, I'm doing it for the. I want the upper floor in the FEMA camp. Hey, let me tell I you want what, the view. It's like O'Brien. Winston thinks O'Brien's his friend, and when he's in the FEMA camp jail, who's O'Brien and who's Winston? The, the guy that tortures him in 1984. O'Brien um, walks in and he says, "They got you too," and he said, "They got me a long time ago." Oh, and, he's, and he's the guy that's going to torture Winston. Well, that's what everybody's worried about, and that's right? that's what it's this like, is. Look, O'Brien. Here, ro ro rotate that camera around right there. Camera three. He's showing that he's going to lock you up. There's O'Brien. There's O'Brien inside there right now. See, now this has been my take always on police officers and soldiers. And if you want to start blaming the people that are running this world, that's one thing. But cops aren't getting paid for that. They're not the ones that are profiting off of it. And narcotics officers never plant drugs on people. Well, I think there's just certain.